Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to Busting Rainbow Six Siege. Today we are myth busting the Bulletproof Camera Rework. Now, we've seen this before. This actually showed up on the test servers two seasons ago, so that's six months ago. And this rework allows the camera to be panned around and also to fire an EMP burst. And any living defender can take full control of this camera. Now, if an attacker hacks into it, they can pan around as well, but they cannot fire off the EMP. Now let's get into the test for this gadget and usual disclaimer here, this is all in the test ever so things may get tweaked and some of the interactions may change, but let's get to the mess. So first up the basics, can this EMP a drone? Now I think this is what the gadget will get used for the most, like it's going to be definitely used just to disable drones most of the time, but we'll go over the other stuff as well. So of course you just shoot it and that is it. It's really simple and the EMP lasts around about 7 seconds. It's not very long but it's easily long enough to disable a drone and then someone can run up and destroy it. And any defender who's alive can use the camera's EMP. And I could definitely see a combo of Muzzy and another defender using it in order to try and you know collect up drones really simply and really easily with this. However, you can also EMP a character as well. So for instance here, we're EMPing Yana. She is then unable to get into her drones because her little phone is disabled. And if her gadget is on her body and it's electrical, it'll also be disabled for a short time as well. There's an on-screen prompt to let you know when you have been EMP'd by the Bulletproof Cam. So this is a, you know, a new thing for attackers to be disabled by an EMP. It used to be only defenders, but certainly confirmed you can EMP drones and players. But let's talk about the size of the EMP blast because I was thinking it was quite small because I'm, you know, most of the time just using it to take out drones. But I set up a wall of Hibanas and I went and I shot the EMP at them and I was surprised at how large the actual area of effect is. Of course, it's nowhere near like a Thatcher EMP, but it's still surprisingly big and it means you don't have to be particularly accurate to actually hit a drone and disable it. So it's confirmed it actually has quite a decent sized AOE. Now the next test was range. Now this used to be called, when the first time we seen it, an EMP dart, which would have presumably meant that it was some sort of projectile that actually flew through the air. And I thought, is there a, you know, a maximum range to this? Because it's now called an EMP burst. Now you cannot, in this update, put cameras outside. They lose connection after 10 seconds. So of course I would have in the past probably gone outside to like, to the runway on plane and I would have fired this thing all the way across the runway but to make this more a reasonable test we've actually just got a very long corridor what I would consider to be a you know particularly long one in Rainbow Six Siege and this thing easily fires over that distance no problem but that is confirmed the range on this thing is unlimited or at least unlimited enough to be at any range in Rainbow Six Siege's maps. And I'm glad I like rocking a gun 6 because I'm going to be shooting these all the time when I see them. The Defender EMP also disables defenders. So what we're looking at here is Vigil. His ability is on. If we go into the cameras and then we come out, you can see how his ability is still on. It maintains the ability, but if we EMP him, it switches the ability off. Now this is a bit strange because if another defender comes in and EMPs him, it doesn't do anything. There's no indication of an EMP whatsoever. So what I thought here is maybe the fact that I'm using a main ability on this gadget is just overriding my one. So watch this, we EMP away from Vigil and his ability has been switched off. So it is busted. The EMP does not affect any defenders, so defender gadgets or defender characters whatsoever. But using the actual EMP shot can override the ability that you've actually got active on your character at the time. And I think probably only affects Vigil. So that is something to watch out for. I'm thinking that is probably something they'll fix though before launch. Up next, can you disable Thermite's Hard Breach Charge? So this of course extends out to other devices too that are remotely detonated. And the answer is yes, you can disable them. I don't know if this is going to happen much, but you might well be able to hide a camera in a very sneaky spot and potentially delay Thermite for 7 seconds because he's obviously just going to turn right around and take your camera out after that. But certainly, it is confirmed and if you pull it off, it'll be great. Now let's bring in Fuse because he's got a bunch of different gadgets now and let's just test them. So first of all, the secondary hard breach. If Fuse himself is EMP'd and puts the charge up, it works completely fine. 
and that is to be expected there's no electronics in it it's just a fuse setting off charges so nothing can have to get in the way if we put that charge down then we emp it during its preparation or its you know detonation phase it still goes off fine then it gets kind of surprising so if we put down a cluster charge while emp'd no problem but if we actually detonate it, it works. Even while I am EMP'd, I can use the device which should be disabled. Then if we go and we use his charge again and we EMP the charge this time instead of fuse, well, that is then disabled and it doesn't work. So there's a few confusion bits in there, but overall it's mostly simple apart from him doing the remote detonation. That was kind of odd, but everything else is kind of how you would expect it to be. Now we know that area of effect is pretty big, so does it actually work through walls? Because that would make it extra interesting if it did. So we've got a thermite charge, we've got a bulletproof wall, we've got a bulletproof camera. And it works. It actually works. Now I don't know how legit of a tactic this will actually make, but the recharge time is too slow. So you would need two cameras working in series, but you could have one defender switching between both cameras, setting off the EMP, and actually indefinitely disabling the thermite charge. Now, there is of course a problem, which is where is the thermite charge? Because you need to be relatively accurate. It's not the hugest of area of effects, but it looks legitimate. Like you could potentially lock down a reinforced wall indefinitely with just one guy and two cameras, and that could be a pretty cool tactic. So that's confirmed it works through reinforced walls. Now let's move on to the more operator specific tests and we'll start with Dokubi. So if Dokubi gets EMP'd, she will not be able to use her gadget whatsoever for seven seconds. So again, that harassing tactic can really come in handy to just piss off an attacker. And also, if she actually successfully gets off a call and then she gets EMP'd, the call still goes through, but you'll notice that the cooldown has actually been delayed by seven seconds. So you're extending the cooldown on her gadget by seven seconds by EMP in her. And you're probably only gonna get up a couple of successful EMPs in a match, I would expect, on actual players, because most of them are just gonna run up to your camera and melee it which will disable the EMP function of the bulletproof camera. But if you can put this camera in a good spot and get the positioning right, you can potentially have it in a place where you can hit a few attackers over and over again if you're lucky. But certainly confirmed it affects Dockaby. Now what about Nuke? Cause Nuke is the anti-camera girl. Is there finally a camera that's actually gonna fight back against her? So first of all, we're gonna EMP Nuke and then attempt to activate her ability and it works perfectly fine. We'll wait on the recharge for the bulletproof camera and then we'll hit her again while her ability is active. And again, nothing goes wrong. So Nuke is completely invulnerable here when it comes to her gadget. Now, if she was to jump into her drone, then she wouldn't be able to see uh, you know, the view while she's disabled, but her gadget is completely immune to it. So yeah, that is busted because the bulletproof camera just doesn't affect Nuke. So let's take a look at the interaction with Jackal. And Jackal's is a bit more severe. So if he's just got his HUD on and looking for footprints and he gets EMP, it actually switches it off entirely. And again, seven seconds later, he can switch it back on. And again, just like Doc B, if he actually successfully scans a footprint and it starts to ping a defender, even if he gets EMP'd, it'll continue to ping that defender. And because his gadget has no cooldown, that also means there's no extension to a cooldown on his gadget. But certainly confirmed it does affect him and actually quite severely. Now we've got a complicated one. So Finca. Finca has two types of gadget on her. She's got nanobots in her bloodstream and she's got a gadget on her hand that activates them. So if she gets EMP, she just cannot activate her hand thing and get the nanobots going. However, if she activates the nanobots and she gets EMP'd, she'll be fine. The heal is still there. She's still got that boost and it continues. And also if any of the attackers get EMP'd and then she boosts them and nanobots still work. So I think we can kind of look at this as the nanobots are immune to the EMP, but the EMP disables the gadget that actually activates the nanobots. This is also exactly the same thing when she is down but not out because the EMP will disable her ability to self revive. And again, that's for seven seconds. So this is another legitimate tactic. If you see Finca get down and you're on a bulletproof camera, you can shoot her to actually stop her getting back up. And then potentially the defender can come in and finish her off before she can get revived. 
So that is confirmed. And now we've got Yara, who is basically just a big walking drone, and I think this is most likely to be the second most used option for the EMP bulletproof camera because she's most likely to be running into your defenses and you can just shoot her with the EMP, it will stop her hologram and just like every other operator who has a cooldown, if she's EMP, it will stop that cooldown again for 7 seconds which is definitely worth doing and again it just kind of harasses the attacker so definitely not a bad tactic to go with. Also you don't have to shoot the hologram so if she's already launched a hologram and ran away from the bulletproof camera you can just shoot her and in turn that will disable the actual hologram that she's using right there because you're disabling the tech that she's using to interact with it. So that's confirmed and actually quite useful to know. And then we've got Lion. Now of course the thing is Lions, they're really smart, they will use their gadget as soon as they spawn. So they are not going to get EMP'd by bulletproof camera as easily but it is exactly the same thing. If he gets EMP'd by the camera he will not be able to use his gadget but if he's able to get his gadget off before the EMP hits it'll be fine and if he gets EMP'd during the cooldown phase that cooldown will be extended by 7 seconds. So that is confirmed. And now we've got a really cool one if you can pull this off and that is to EMP a Claymore so your defender buddy can just run on right past. I think this is going to be awesome if anyone's able to pull this off because it looks cool. Now it's not technically exactly the best tactic because the EMP is actually very loud as loud as just shooting the Claymore. So it is definitely not the best tactic but if you can do it it will certainly look very cool. So that is confirmed. You can EMP Flores' drone. Now of course this drone can drive into your objective site and blow up a whole bunch of gadgets. Well you can actually EMP it. It'll also stay vulnerable too so you can shoot it while it's disabled. But as soon as the disabled wears off it will explode so be wary of that. But that means that yeah the EMP camera here is really good against Flores. Now Ace works a lot like a secondary hard breach and I would expect it to work exactly the same with the EMP camera here. So if we throw this out, stick it to the wall and then EMP it with the camera, it actually disables it which I didn't think was going to happen. Now this does make a little bit of sense because Mute can stop it but yeah kind of interesting and again this works through the wall like the thermite charge earlier too. So I don't know if you're going to be again able to make a viable tactic out of this but certainly it does actually put that 7 second delay into the charge as well so that's confirmed. You can EMP IQ's gadget. Now IQ's gadget of course is electronic. This should totally disable it and stop it working but it doesn't. Interesting choice here for the developers. They must have made her you know kind of immune to it for some reason and certainly yeah very handy to this doesn't do nothing, it's just busted. It does not have any effect on her gadget. We've also got another one here which is Glaz's scope. So if he's sighted in you can see the thermal picture of Jaeger there and the EMP has no effect on it whatsoever but you will notice that the actual reticle is gone. So that is a reason to actually just EMP a general attacker as they run in because that will be lost on their sight picture but certainly it is busted. Glaz is not affected. And then the last one we're going to test here is Ash and she's got a few different gadgets we can take a look at. So just a normal breach and charge if we place that on a wall and we actually EMP it directly then of course she's not able to detonate whatsoever. And if we then do the switch over and we actually EMP Ash herself she is then able to actually detonate it without any issues. So yeah apparently that detonator switch doesn't get affected by an EMP. And then the Ash breaching round, I shot an EMP at it during its detonation sequence and it went off as normal without any problems. So that's, you know, busted. There's no kind of uh, holding back Ash with this new gadget. Now let's do a couple of tests that are just EMP versus EMP. So let's start with duration and that is, does Thatcher's EMP last longer than Defender's EMP? This is of course very clear. The Defender's one is far shorter than Thatcher's one and Thatcher's one just overall is far more impressive than the Defender's one. But I guess you can use the Defender's one a lot more. And then finally, can an EMP kill an EMP? So I thought, why not try shooting an EMP with an EMP? Would it destroy an EMP? And unfortunately, no, it doesn't. And it you know, kind of makes sense. But uh, yeah, this busted. You cannot kill an EMP with an EMP.
So there you go guys, that is a new bulletproof camera tested. I don't think there's anything game changing here, but it definitely will iterate the gameplay for normal players. I could imagine Pro League though might come up with some seriously cool tactics with the EMP working through surfaces, but we'll have to wait and see. Anyway guys, let me know what you think of this in the comments below and I'll catch you next time.